approve the acts of 2022 signed by governor on February 15th, 2022. I announce that this meeting of the select board is being recorded by Hadley Media, the select board's office via Zoom, and ask if there's anyone present who is also recording this meeting. Let the minutes reflect that no one else has indicated that they are recording this meeting. All right. Public comments. Any public comments? Anybody on Zoom? I'm looking. Any public comments on Zoom? Please raise your hand if you're on Zoom for public comments. I see none. All right. Is Amy coming tonight? Mm -hmm, so, but you put that one way out of it, so you probably hit that. Well. All right, moving along to the consent agenda. And the consent agenda. Warrants AP 2314 INS, AP 2314, AP 2314 B, AP 2314 S, AP 2315 S, AP 2315, PR 2306, Supplemental PR 2307. Just a question quick before we do that. Well, we're going to do minutes at all tonight? You will have minutes very soon, and you will have a large pile of them. Very, very, very soon. Motion to approve the consent agenda as read. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? All right. Moving on, 4.1. Um, Kevin Michelson. From Save a Buck LLC has applied for a class two auto dealer's license at eight Pine Hill Road. I have to abstain from this discussion. Mr. Michelson is a client of mine. I believe Jennifer has some information for us, but I think um, after she presents that, we would like to uh, put this off to the next meeting. Um, well, I was just going to say that the application is complete. They have filed with the state. They have a surety bond in place. They We did ask them to go to the planning board because Save a Buck has existed as a as a business for a while, but they've changed their, how it's incorporated. Um, and now Kevin Michelson will be the owner of the, of the business. Um, and he did go to planning board as requested. And um, the planning board approved him for one car on site for sale. But it was brought to my attention that there might be an issue with the DPW that y'all need to be to, to consider when you're considering a license this evening. Is there any, anything outstanding that is owed to the town at this point? Or? As I understand, there's a, a situation with the um, driveway. driveway. Um, <clears throat> I don't have all the information for I wasn't able to uh, discuss that with uh, the DPW director today. But perhaps, um, Jane, do you have more information about that? Only that he has not yet pulled the permit for driveway. Um, with him having outstanding business with the town for that property, perhaps y'all would find it um, beneficial to uh, continue this vote or make this vote contingent upon him um, having his driveway permit with the DPW. It would be y'all's decision. I'll make a motion for us to grant the permit, the application for the auto dealer's license. If he uh, contingent on his application for the driveway. And in accordance with the restrictions right. imposed by the planning board. Okay. Yeah, I can second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Mandy abstain. Thank you. Mandy George from Z <coughs> Motors, who I see on Zoom has applied for class two auto dealers licensship at 249 Russell Street. Again, um, Armani, I think can speak to it since he is here, um, but he has applied. This is a car dealership that was open for a while. It did close for a little bit. They're coming back. It had been over two years. So he went to the planning board as well. And the planning board has approved them for two vehicles. And Armani, do you, would you like to speak to the select board for a moment? Uh, yes, I just want to say hi to everybody. Uh, we 
can't hear anybody. Hold on one second, Armani. Somebody remind me where 249 Russell is. It's next right to before Hadley. Hadley. The, the newest cannabis. Uh, right before Hadley. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Right now. Armani? No, hold on. Right near you, Randy? Yeah, I'm 235, so it's four or five houses towards the bike path from me. Just a technical difficulty. It'll make it more exciting. Armani, you're right down the road. Do you want to just pop down here? Well, it is. Oh, oh there you are. We hear you. We hear you. We hear you now. Hello, yep. everybody. How are you? Good, good. Uh, my name is Armani George. I am the owner of ZG Motors. Um, it was an established business a while ago back, and then it shut down for over two years due to uh, COVID. Um, and we're just trying to start it back up again. We was previously approved for a three, three vehicle license. And since the taking that they're doing in Hadley, the, I went to the planning board and that they said they would approve me for two. Um, I have my surety bond in place. All my applications are filled out. And it's coming down to this. I'm sorry, Armani, can you repeat that last statement? Oh, I said I have my surety bond. I'm pretty sure Jennifer already has a copy of it. Um, my application is completely filled out. Hopefully I did it right. And I just have to come to the board meeting to be voted on. His license is complete. We have a surety bond and he did go to the planning board as we asked. So he, he is ready to go as well. Does he have any other outstanding business with the town? Not that I am aware of. I will double check again, um, just the timing lag. But I, so if you wanna make a contingent upon that, but I believe he's okay. Make a motion to approve a class two auto dealer's license for the ZG Motors, um, contingent upon uh, follow-up by Jennifer to make sure that uh, any outstanding items with the town are rectified if they exist. Right. And, and two vehicles. And for the two Correct. vehicles as well. Yeah. Second. Mm -hmm. Jane. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? All those abstentions? Passes and All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Armani. Thank you. <laughs> Item 4.3, the Attorney General's determination. We're going to read the whole uh, correspondence from the Attorney General, which will then put it in the minutes and make it available to anyone who is now. Dated August 19th, 2022, from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Office of the Attorney General. O OML 2022. Dash one six four, Jeffrey Blake Esquire, KP Law, regarding open meeting law complaint. Dear Attorney Blake, this office has received a complaint from Paula Kazuba on December fifteenth, alleging that the Hadley Select Board violated the open meeting law GLC three O A paragraph eighteen to twenty five. 
The complaint was originally filed with the board on or about July 14th, and you responded on behalf of the board by a letter dated August 19th. The complaint alleges that the board deliberately outside of a posted meeting regarding whether to reduce the membership of the Hadley Conservation Commission, the commission, and whether to reappoint to the commission Ms. Kazuba and another member, Steve Sinkowitz. We appreciate the patience of the parties while we investigated this matter. Following our investigation and review, we find that the board deliberated outside of a posted meeting by email on one occasion, but do not otherwise find sufficient evidence to conclude that the board deliberated outside of a notice meeting. In reaching this determination, we reviewed the open meeting law complaint, the board's response, the request for further review, additional documents and information provided by the complainant and the board, and a video recording of the board's meeting held on May 12th and July 7th. We also communicated with counsel for the board on numerous occasions seeking additional information. Finally, we conducted a phone interview with board member Joyce Chung. At the outset, we noted that our review is limited to whether the board violated open meeting law by deliberating outside of a posted meeting. We do not review and take no position on whether the board was authorized or justified in reducing the number of commission members and not reappointing Skuzuka. We find the facts to be as follows. The complaint stems from a July 7th board meeting and events surrounding that meeting in which the board voted to reduce the membership of the commission and did not reappoint Ms. Kazuba, who had served on the commission for many years and was the commission's chair at the time. The board is a five-member public body. Therefore, three members constitute a quorum. On May 8th and 11th, the board and the board's then chair, David Phil, received three emails from citizens expressing frustrations or concern regarding the commission. On May 12th, the board held a meeting and during public comments heard from a citizen regarding his dissatisfaction with the commission. In response, board member Joyce Chunglo asked the citizen to send his concerns to the board in writing and noted that the board was gathering information for future use. Board member John Waskevis then stated that he watched two prior commission meetings and that he believed the commission was having some problems. Mr. Waskevitz also stated that he wished to see the commission membership reduced from seven members to five. Ms. Chunglo spoke a few more times briefly and a few citizens commented regarding the first citizen's complaint. On July 11th, the board posted a notice for a meeting to be held on July 7th at 6 p.m. The notice read in relevant part, one, old business, 7.1, boards and committees, annual appointment renewals. Addition, Conservation Commission, Paulette Kazuba, Stephen Sinkowitz. The select board will also discuss the lowering of the numbers of members of the Conservation Commission from seven to five. On July 6, Ms. Chunglo called Ms. Kazuba and discussed the above notice topic as it related to the commission. Although Ms. Kazuba and Ms. Chunglo disagreed about the substance of the conversation, both agreed that the conversation took place. Ms. Kazuba contends that Ms. Chunglo stated that during the call, the board had already decided to reduce the number of commission members and that therefore there was no reason to reappoint Ms. Kazuba or Mr. Singles. Ms. Chunglo contends that she did not say that the board had already decided to reduce the commission, but rather that she simply informed Ms. Kazuba that this topic would be discussed at the next day's meeting. On July 7th at 8.56 a.m., board member Shane Nevinsmith emailed the town administrator stating in part, attached is from the state regarding conservation commissions. It appears that this is a town meeting issue, not a select board choice. You want me to let David know or can you do that? Attached to the email was a document including an excerpt from the Massachusetts Association of Conservation Commissions handbook regarding the size of and changes to the size of conservation commission. The document also included a comment about the creation of the commission. That same day at 3.19 p.m., the town administrator forwarded Ms. Nevin Smith's email to Chair Phil. Mr. Phil then forwarded the email 
from the town administrator to Mr. Waskevich at 4.18 p.m. stating, Jane sent to the town administrator. I read that as three to seven members, which we are keeping five, so we are following town meeting vote. If we need to appoint seven, then we keep Sinky and get rid of his Kazuba and appoint Joe Bosford. On July 7th, the board convened its meeting. In total, there was approximately one hour of discussion related to reducing the size of the commission and reappointing Ms. Kazuba and Mr. Singlewitz. During this time, the board heard from members of the public, the commission, and the commission staff. Members of the board discussed the topic as well. Ms. Nevin Smith expressed her concern that the board did not have authority to reduce the membership of the commission and advocated that the board not make a decision that evening. Other board members expressed their support for reducing the number of commission members and for not reappointing Ms. Kazuba and Mr. Sinkowitz, specifically noting that they had received complaints about the commission. Throughout the discussion, Ms. Kazuba spoke a few times and there was back and forth regarding whether the commission had ever been made aware of the complaints that supposedly formed part of the basis for reducing the size of the commission and not reappointing Ms. Kazuba and Mr. Sinkowitz. Ultimately, the board voted to reappoint Mr. Sinkowitz, but not Ms. Kazuba, and to reduce the commission by one member. Discussion. The open meeting law was enacted to eliminate much of the sequency surrounding the deliberations and decisions on which public policy is based. That's from Gingalo versus the School Board of Southbridge. The state law, in relevant part, that except in an emergency, a public body shall post notice of every meeting at least 48 hours prior to such meeting, excluding Saturdays, Sundays, and legal holidays. Except when convened in executive session, all meetings of a public body shall be open to the public. A meeting is defined in relevant part as a deliberation by a public body with respect to any matter within the body's jurisdiction. The law defines deliberation broadly as any oral or written communication through any medium, including electronic mail between or among forum body, uh, between or among a forum of a public body or any public business within its jurisdiction. ID. A quorum is a simple majority of the members of a public body. ID. In one way communication from one public body member to a quorum on matters within the body's jurisdiction constitutes deliberation for purpose of the open meeting law, even if no other public body member responds. A public body may not engage in serial communication whereby a quorum communicates in a non-contemporaneous manner outside of a meeting on a subject within the public body's jurisdiction. Uh, holding that private serial communication violates the spirit of the open meeting law and may not be used to circumvent the intent of the law. We find that the board deliberated outside of the notice of the meeting July 7th, when Mr. Phil forwarded Ms. Nevin Smith's email regarding the board's authority to reduce the size of the commission to Mr. Waskevitz, thus causing the communication to reach a quorum of board. We ordered the board, if it has not already done so, to release to the public the full chain of emails. We received inconsistent explanation from board members regarding whether additional communication concerning the membership of the commission occurred. Although we are concerned that the board may have had further discussion, the membership had further discussed the membership of the commission, following our investigation, we were unable to find sufficient evidence of improper deliberation. We note that, based on correspondence reviewed in the course of our investigation, it appears that Mr. Phil may have had a practice of communicating with board members individually, including by phone, regarding matters within the board's jurisdiction, including discussing upcoming votes in a way that would clearly violate open meeting law. We take this opportunity to remind the board that deliberation is broadly defined as any communication between or among the quorum of the board in any business within its jurisdiction, and that deliberation may only take place during a meeting for which notice has been properly posted and which is open to the public unless a lawful executive session has been convened. Furthermore, 
impermissible deliberations can occur in a serial manner, including by calling a quorum of a public body individually to convey the same information to poll members. <coughs> Conclusion. For the reasons stated above, we find that the board improperly deliberated by email July 7th, when Chair Phil forwarded an email from one board member to a third board member. <laughs> We order the board's immediate and future compliance with open meeting law. And we caution that similar future violations may be considered evidence of intent to violate the law and may result in the imposition of $1,000 civil penalty, penalty for intentional violation. Additionally, we order the board, if it is not already done so, to release the public full chain of July 7th emails that will be attached to this. We now consider the complaint addressed by this determination to be resolved. This determination does not address any other complaints that may be pending with the board or with our office. Please feel free to contact our office, 617-963-2540, if you have any questions regarding this letter. Sincerely, Elizabeth Carnes Flynn, Assistant Attorney General, Division of Open Covenant. Do you want me to read an email chain or can we just attack? Um, no, I think we're good. It, it, so the, it uh, it can be attached. I, I spoke with the it's attorney generals to attach it to okay. this documentation and be a part of the minutes, which we will have for, for you tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions? I just want to let the, I again, want to be squeaky clean and let the public know where they can access the minutes if people don't know that's where we're we're including it. Y'all will <clears throat> y'all will vote on them tomorrow night. Um I think before the public forum actually starts and vote on the minutes. <clears throat> Excuse me, and then I'll release them the next day onto the town website on the select board page under meeting minutes. Thank you. Gosh. All right, so there was no like penalty or anything? No. How much did this cost us? That's a good There's no, that was future. Okay. There's no what? Your question was how much was fined? Well, no. no how much did how cost much did it cost us to go through this for over a year? The legal to, fees. To, so the, legal all of this? Fees, yeah. I, okay. I don't have that number for you. That's fine. Anything else regarding this? All right, moving along to the warrant and the special family board. Jane, can I suggest that you address 9.1 first since 9 that will be a one. That's the updated version okay. of the declaration. Um, except I told them that was at the end of the meeting and, and see if Do you want to do any of the other? Who's here from the ja I do see Jack here. I'm here, I can address it now. Okay. okay, thank you. Hi, right. hi, everybody. So there were some fairly significant changes that we made after the public information forum. And at our last climate change meeting, uh, we feel that we are best served that amend what was in the warrant and we pass out the new copy with those changes. Jack, is there a redlined version? <clears throat> or, I mean, it's hard to tell if they're minor language changes or are they significant without going through verbatim. So, yeah, we don't have a red line change because we changed the format, Molly. Uh, we added a motivation at the beginning. Much of the content is similar. Um, but certainly we took the information that we heard at the public information session to heart and did some adjusting. Can you just point out in the resolution what has changed so that we can be aware of it? I mean, I can read all through this and I'm I'm really kind of holding a blank here. <laughs> and let me call that up on my copy. So we had some minor changes under the now, therefore, be it resolved on the second page, Joyce. Um, but in general, much of that is similar. 
to that. Um, the big change is the preamble and the motivation, and we change the format. Okay, I, I don't have that, so I guess I'm going to have to see that when I get it tomorrow. Where'd you get that? Um, Carolyn had sent an email, and it's in Board Docs. Yeah, so I, today it's in Board Docs too. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on Board Docs right now. Scroll all the way down. No, it's on section 9.1. It's not under the warrant. Is so it? the warrant has the original, and then that's the revised to near hand. Let's see, I quit. It looks to me like I don't even have a nine point one yeah. on my yeah. <laughs> so I've 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 read both of them numerous times and it is the content is basically the same. There's a, a few minor changes, but as Jack said, it's the format that's different. I appreciate what you've done, Jack, in order to to mellow it down a little bit and 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 try to you know get people to understand that it's it's just a non-binding document and and I appreciate that. So this is really for no action on our part other than informative and it's for town meeting to decide next week, right? Yes, yeah. but because it initiated here, the first request was here, I wanted to make sure you guys addressed it as a separate item. Um, and And Jack, that amendment would be taken on the floor. I spoke, I spoke with a moderator today. So not at the forum on Thursday, but it would be on the floor of the special town meeting next Thursday. Correct. And we will make sure there's copies there. Will we talk about it at the forum tomorrow? There's a revised version that's going to be presented at town meeting. Yes. I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Would it be possible, um, there are some people that do go out and look at the warrant in advance of town meeting um, that won't come to the forum. Is it possible to get that revised version out there? Sure. With the warrant? Yeah. Or, so I don't know if there's a problem with that or not. No. Okay. Do you want paper copies or online? Well, I'm just saying, so if people go online, so at least they can find it ahead of time. Okay. Yep. Yep. yep, Molly, we absolutely want this out for everybody to be able to review before town meeting. Right. Any other discussion? Thank you, Jack and Climate Committee for all your work on this. Thank you to the select board. All right, moving on to warrant assignments and recommendations. Carolyn, I give this to you. This is the agenda with the motion. No, the motion was today. With the motions. And so, Jane, would it be okay if I just made an observation? Yes. <laughs> um, this is not pointing, you know, pointing fingers or trying to assess blame or be angry or anything, but um, in in the past, we've typically had um, versions of the warrant as it was going along. And I know we saw like an initial shell a long time ago, but what I realized when I finally got the warrant on Friday and saw all the numbers dropped in, um, and I, I have to admit, I gulped a little bit when I got to the capital article in particular. Um, and I gulped because not that I necessarily saw anything that was problematic, and we'll talk about all of this tonight. But I realized it's the Wednesday before the public forum tomorrow and only one week away from town meeting. And we haven't really talked about the town finances in any particular select board meeting in terms of where did we wind up at the end of last year? Um, free cash was submitted for certifications. What's the basis of the free cash? What are the components of that? How much were departmental rollbacks, which goes to the budgeting process versus one-time revenue? all of that. And then when I'm looking at the capital, I've, I've got a lot of questions in terms of 
here's what's on here, but what's not on here. Uh, and, you know, in the past, we usually had at least a few meetings where we talked through kind of the context of all of this before we actually got to town meeting. The other thing I'm realizing is we haven't actually met with the finance committee. We used to have joint meetings with the finance committee. And so I'm, I'm looking at a warrant as a sitting select board member realizing capital planning did their thing, but, which is fine. I mean, they, they took votes. The finance committee voted on this at a meeting and we haven't even talked to either group about it. And I mean, for me, I just find it frustrating. Um, and I'm hoping that, you know, as we roll into annual town meeting and subsequent meetings, maybe we could have a more detailed calendar so that the select board's brought along in the conversation. And, and we're not, I mean, honestly, I just feel like a little bit under pressure to go ahead and vote tonight. And I, I made some phone calls and that, you know, between Friday when I read it and started trying to find as much information as I could. But I, it seems like that's something that we should be doing collectively and all have all have the benefit of conversations with department heads who are involved in this or um, other folks. So I'm just making a request that I don't, I don't, this just doesn't feel great for me right now. Thank you. But we did know what was on the agenda, what the town warrant was. I mean, we're not going into this totally blind on what was being presented by capital or um, our other budgets. We may have not, and we've had numbers given to us, um, probably looks a little bit different than uh, what we originally had, but we do have numbers before us. They do have the reserve and everything that else is in it that we uh, normally look for and have. But we got it on Friday, Joyce, is my This is what we've had. In yeah, I know right. that we've had in the past. Yeah. I'm saying- I've been here for 19 years, Jane. I'm, I'm aware. <laughs> Thank you. Jane was pointing out the- this is what was on a previous agenda. So, yeah. so obviously, I mean, Carolyn and everybody involved in this did an awful lot of work to develop the numbers, the numbers for the town meeting. Yes, but for me, it's out of it. It would be out of context. I mean, again, in the context of the wider financial picture for the town, you know, I, I had somebody who saw the warrant online and started asking me questions about the capital. Um, I, you know, I was able to answer them and respond to their concerns, but that we should all know what's going on well in advance of special town meeting. Yes, I, I don't have a history with the select board, obviously, but I believe as well that we should be having meetings with all the various entities that create the budget so that we can contribute if we feel necessary. The way this comes across to me is that everybody does their work and then we rubber stamp it and i believe as well that we should be involved in the process usually we have a joint meeting with finance prior to our, our town meetings whether it be the fall one or the spring one so that we do get together with with them um, I'm not sure why at this point why we didn't. I mean, we all did our own thing, I suppose, as you're saying, uh, and we have met with them previously. So, I mean, but it's not unusual. But before that, we didn't. So, I mean, I've been in both both shoes and positions. We had everybody come in. We've had tedious amounts of meetings in the past. Um, I think probably everybody just tried to streamline this town meeting because we've had so much on our plate. But um, yeah, again, probably more meetings with finance committee who do meet with all of the uh, departments and capital and everybody else so that we, you know, they're aware of what takes place and what needs to be done. And, and at that point, we actually okay. didn't feel like we needed to have single meetings with everybody or have people into our meetings just to uh, reiterate what they've already told the finance committee who have you know really worked hard to uh, put this budget together themselves so i mean it's not like they missed a step in doing what they're supposed to do and keeping track of our budget and thing and i'm sure finance has been in touch with um, our treasurer our accountant you know knowing what monies are there correct linda do you have a big comment on this no. 
I think I think it's a good point and that the because I a girl and I sit in on the capital plan. And we sit in on the finance committees uh, that we use the budget sections here. And um, I don't know that you know, to put us in the position of being a conduit, but you know, it's almost, I mean, I, I don't like to get in the position of advocating. Um, I mean, they should, I think these committees should be able to speak for themselves. So perhaps one day reviewed and they complete it, you, the capital planning committee, comes in, reports to the select board. Just on that, you know, it's not a review of the warrant every single time the way we've done in the past, but come in a report on the capital warrant, uh, capital article on the warrant, because it is a little different this year. Um, and, and I think that's what Molly's probably reacting to. This is a little, you know, a little, a little different. And Randy was there at that meeting too. So you have some representation, but that's not the same as having someone, or, or maybe it would be you, Randy, but actually structured in, in an agenda how, how to report back on. Uh, amendments to the budget have a re from the finance committee have a report back on the capital plan and as far as the other about like the context the financial situation of the town and how you get that I do those written reports and I know I know it's like to receive a written report with numbers all over it. it's like oh, thanks for your hard work and then but you can't end. you don't really understand it you really didn't spend the time on it or you mean to and you don't get back to it I don't think it would take very many minutes for, you know, for again, that to be an agenda item. When I have a little advanced notes that come on in and would you bring that in and and and, uh, and speak about where the town is at this point, where we stand with the budget. And you I have think, and you have done that. I, I actually have them I can hand up tonight. I have a first quarter done where we are in the first quarter of 2023, but we don't really have a way of getting that across to you except for um by sending it by email. Again, I'm not sure that I really have an opportunity to explain it to you, but if you want to uh, make this something that is officially part of the agenda, I think that that's something. I'm always happy to come in. I'm always happy to come talk to you. Well, I think yeah. at, equally important, now that you're saying that, Linda, about bringing it to the select board, the other thing is it's an opportunity for the public to hear where we stand financially, right? I mean, I think taxpayers out there would like to know how we ended up the fiscal year last year and, and where we stand with collections mm -hmm. right now, because that's going to in, help inform their voting next week as well. So, right. yeah, so oh. I think Joyce was agreeing with me. <laughs> in, a, in a sense. In a sense. Yes, you have the information. Yeah. But I don't feel like we need to have every single department come in and be in front of us to explain their budget. That's not what no, we I do or why we we said for them to go to the finance committee, present their budget. The finance committee does the budget. As you know, you were on the finance committee. And and but doing this these other numbers where you know it's the whole total picture is totally different than individual departments yeah no I, i'm not advocating for every department really i hope through. not because i would yeah. be in favor of that one That's like and, and i don't think booting. yeah i don't think anybody's here is is saying that the the finance committee the capital committee is doing a poor job and we need to oversee that i just think we need to understand and to your point you can give us a piece of paper but it's better to be able to ask questions yes Okay. But there's more to this than capital. There's finance committee too. Right. So it sounds to me like the onus is on us to require or request that the various appropriate committees come before us once they've made their decisions so that we can discuss it so that we understand where they're coming from. Understand their thinking just in case we think something differently. Right. So it's, you know, kind of worked out before we get to town meeting. And then if we agree to disagree, that's fine. You know, that happens too. But. Right. I think it would be useful to have it come to us in advance of closing the warrant before there was still time for conversation about all sides. Yeah, that'd be ideal. And I know that numbers are worked on right up until the end because there's always other data coming in and mm -hmm. the state you know, cherishing and all of those things. But what we can get, it would be better to have something than to just go into it and say, ah, this is what we were given. Mm -hmm. so, does someone want to make a motion? 
to do what? I thought we were going through these. So we can I don't think we need a motion. I think, think it's, it's just a matter of the future. Oh, for no. the future. No. Well, like, great discussion. The agenda, if you could take that into account. Mm -hmm. That would be great. All right. It's just discussion at this point. All right. All right. Here we go. Carolyn. Article one. They want you in the hot seat. They want you in the hot seat. Why can't I do it from here? Uh, no. Is that okay if no. she's there, Alex, or you want her? Do you need her up there? <clears throat> is, is she okay, Carolyn? Is she okay over here? Or did you want her the? Okay, you'll show a better on the camera if you're sitting in front of us. <clears throat> Did you want to pop up the email number? Yeah, we need one. Do you have that? On that laptop, on the PC drive. Oh, I'm not sure. I don't know what I'm not sure. He was taking a show on the road. See, I love my hat. Oh, I see you want to do it. Sure. Yeah, I want to share everything. Come on, go over to the window. You want to? I'll see you later. I thought I would get a picture of you. Okay. Yeah. Do you have the 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 one in the comments? You have. I should give me just a second. They have the hard copy. I didn't know you wanted. I don't think the motions need to be on screen. Those are for us. I can put the warrant itself up then on the big screen. No, I I it's something that you want now to know like yeah, I mean, right now, I mean, I'm assuming we're just going to go through the warrant and then there may be questions that come up as we're going through this. And, uh, yeah. 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 No, 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 no. The, 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 the numbers. <laughs> you can do better than that, Linda. The numbers are here, Linda. If there's anything that's different, then you can interject. No. Oh. How was that? Yeah. Okay. No, it was your help. Okay, so we'll start with article one. Uh, these are adjustments that were made uh, that were going to impact, obviously, this year. Um, one, as I go through them, uh, I'm going to go through actually from 210, 222, and 422. Those were a result of uh, collective bargaining. The three years was up for those three unions, which was police, dispatch or communications and highway salaries. So these reflect those increases for this year. I wanna point out that the high rate, highway salary uh, for that increase, increase from negotiations, um, he, it, it actually was more than that, but there's uh, one of the positions we have, we are not replacing, uh, that was the former field superintendent. Um, after speaking with Scott, he feels that um, that position at this point right now is not needed. And so we used the extra amount from that to cover the increase. So that would be closer to um, probably 90,000, um, but we have decreased that amount right here. Um, if we go back to the select board salaries, uh, we had some um, so, uh, some temporary help to fill in for a position that was out on um, for health reasons. So that that is covering the extra help for the sub and um, the slow, uh, not slow, but we it uh, that position did not come back full time, came back part time, and we were still covering it with some some additional part time staff. 
The treasurer's salary, that increase as well, that is, I'm going to put that together with the treasurer and the collectors because that is a request to increase the assistant that the treasurer, I'm sorry, the treasurer, I'm going to talk about, I'm sorry, uh, 145 and 152. Um, Those two um, positions, our benefit coordinator and our treasurer share a part-time assistant to help But we have found with having two uh, positions out this year um, with no additional support who were they were out long term um, health reasons, uh, not having that uh, a full time assistant was detrimental. It really showed how vulnerable we were in having not another person to fill in those positions. So that is to increase that position that they 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 presently share right now to full time. The collector salaries, the adjustment there. Um, is last year we had added uh, two and a half hours to um, to the assistant collector to help with tax title. But what we have found is um, it's working, it, it will work just as effectively under the collector's position and she works in that office anyways. So there are some similarities with the uh, tax title and uh, the treasurer's office. So that is where that adjustment in the collector's salary is, but it was taken out of the treasurer's. Uh, Town building property insurance, both town building property insurance, as well as the benefits and accident insurance have increased significantly during the uh, getting reinsured for this year, uh, more than we had anticipated. Uh, Let's see. I think that is all of them for there. Any questions? May I ask, are we going to vote as we go along? The, the, the other part still is coming under the general revenue funding and then Sorry. The vote. I would jump in the game. Sorry. No problem. No, that's that we we've, we've got that. That was article. Yeah. Oh, the what about the general fund raises appropriate? Table A1. This is the funding for the increased budget. Um, the the increases that we went through, uh, Carolyn's uh, increases are just over two hundred thousand, which raises the budget from nine, about nineteen four to nineteen point six million. And so, therefore, we had to uh, revise the uh, revenue chart to cover that additional amount. And if you and the comp- Complete additional amount is uh, able was able to come out of certified free cash. So from the annual town meeting, we have increased that by the full two hundred nineteen thousand. It's coming out of free cash. So we restated that table from from scratch, but the rest of the figures stay the same. And what about the ARPA? The ARPA, or, uh, the ARPA stays at four hundred. That stays it was four hundred, and we're keeping it at four hundred. Is we're only taking we're taking the additional amount completely out of free cash. And what is certified free cash? Certified free cash um, came in at one million seven hundred and fifty one thousand one hundred sixteen dollars as of uh, as of July one. It's the end of this past year. Um, so that, that is about three hundred fifty thousand more. We had it was one point four million a year ago. So this is higher than that. Um, the amount that we are spending at the town meeting is, is 283,000. Do you all have the, uh, the, she, the sheet that covers? Okay. Yeah. Um, and so you have two, first do you have two lines on, uh, for number two, or is that just the one? Cause I'll give you a, an updated one. I'll take one. one okay. Okay. Please. Please. It's, a, it's a very minor change, but you'll see it's part of our, um, so uh, the reasons for the high cash, we had about eight hundred thousand, close to eight hundred thousand dollars in additional state uh, payments for meals, uh, tax, and room tax, and cannabis. Mm-hmm. So those are the amounts that we received. Those amounts quarterly from the state. Mm-hmm. These are the figures that, um, particularly rooms and meals, that dra- that drastically dropped during COVID. And that's what we used our replacement funds for. And now it's come back and it's come back 
with a boom. They've come, come back higher than we had anticipated and higher than we were getting before. So we were not, uh, we were only able to uh, project the amount um, that we had received the year before. So we received that extra 800,000. So that goes as an additional free cash. In addition to that, the spending within the budget was about $400,000 less than was budgeted. So you take those together and you're at the one, you know, $1.2 million excess going into free cash. And then we have our usual uh, regular, um, rollbacks and other miscellaneous things that come in effect it. We usually, um, I think we used to count on five or six, five to seven hundred thousand dollars in free cash. So yes, it's higher than usual, but we know exactly what it what it's for. Um, so the, the eight hundred thousand then just sticking with the so that's just the local receipts portion predominantly. That's within local receipts. Yes, and we by call those law we can only project a certain amount, which was based on based pandemic. On Numbers. Based on the year before, it's not like we were limited in the projection. We knew we were going to get the extra money. Right. We really, we really didn't. Sure. We were hoping we were going yeah. to get the uh, mm -hmm. what we projected. But that also just being, you know, clear thinking forward. Every year, we're not seeing that level of an increase in mm -hmm. hotel and meals. No. This, this is was just recovery. <laughs> we have a low starting point, and then we have the recovery period. That's right. It's and recovery, then, and 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 there is a rise, but it's a rise at the same level that it used to be. We're, hopefully we will see a bit of an increase each year that the our, our businesses will do better and will benefit from that. Mm -hmm. But um, and then the four hundred thousand less spending, so that doesn't include the departmental rollbacks. Or that is the rollbacks. That's that, the that rollbacks. Is, yes, um, and is that in part that's because we had vacancies, right? Uh, I um, right. no, I was it. Uh, that's it's normal that we have that. Mm. There are some things allowed in budgets that we don't necessarily spend. Um, so that's not a higher amount. I think even small see. departments like mine will turn back two or three thousand dollars that we have planned for a particular use, and, and we didn't end up needing it after all. Well, a lot. Of, for example, a lot nobody was doing. So this year we still weren't doing the traveling during in this past year. So we put uh, there's various amounts that are in the travel budget that then we're going to come back and they roll back. So I don't know if there's any, I don't know that we can tie any one thing in particular to, to it. I think it's a, it's the usual across the board. Uh, and then the other 500 then? So that's like 1.2 million. Right. Um, I don't do the free cash calculations and I don't, there's yeah. various things that go into, you, you know more about this than I do. Um, don't you? I thought you used to. No, but I don't. I don't know what the numbers are yet. This year, I'm not sure what goes into it. Well, you always know that we get back. Yes, some of it is rollbacks, but there's always another, you know, three or four hundred thousand that come from various things. I'm sorry, I haven't. Done. I don't so know. The, the accountant would have that. Yeah, the accountant so the town certainly account has. Right? Yeah. The, so is that something, Carolyn? We could just have available for town meeting, um, so that we have the details sure. of that with us. Mm -hmm. Like we can. What, oh, you want the, it for the next week? Too? Oh, sure. Cash, yeah. Sure. Oh. Um, yeah, I actually have the worksheet that came back, and uh, I hadn't spent a lot of time with it, but I can, and I can talk with Lori about it, and either she'll be at the meeting or or I'll have a better understanding at that time. Yeah, okay, we can we can find out what it is. Make a motion to accept Article One. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Passes unanimous. Article two. So this is some of the similar impact that we had with negotiations, because you know uh, DPW is split between three divisions, uh, water, sewer, and regular in the DPW department. So um, 440, that is from the, the portion that is paid towards salaries for sewer with negotiations, as well as 450 for salaries and other expenses. We are anticipating a resignation of a long-term employee that will have um, an impact on buyouts. So that's included there as well. Hadley Media is uh, when we hired our new uh, director, uh, he came at a higher rate and more hours. Any questions with those? Make a motion to accept Article 2. Second. Motion by Grace, second by Amy. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Abstentions? Absolutely unanimous, please. 
What are we doing? Article three, the cleanup. Cleanup articles, article three. Uh, these are moving from projects that were either completed and there was money left over or because of the length of time, the money that was set aside for that project um, is no longer adequate. And instead of trying to, um, at this point, add on to that with additional requests, uh, it's it, uh, for, for example, the public safety complex, the Sally Port repairs, uh, that and um, that needs to be kind of re rescoped totally. So at this point, um, those those funds are being uh, transferred over to capital stabilization. Um, Linda spent a great deal of time since I've been here the past two years um, looking at all of our capital old capital articles that have not been spent and um, working with all of the department heads and the boards to if it's not going to it's not going to it's not going to be completed or there's not enough money let's let's reallocate it or bring it back and um, very successful at that and and those are basically going to get turned around and put into the uh, the police which is body cameras. cameras. Yeah, which Thank are going to yes. get Thank you. And then as well as 3.2, um, I'm just going to, it's the same thing, so you can still vote right. separately if you'd like. Uh, the school security upgrades, uh, that project did fit um, the requirement the criteria for the new request, new request. So this is partially, it's taking the money left over from social security upgrades from the special town meeting um, in 2018, and it's going to be contributing it to the new request for the school ceiling tiles replacement, which you'll see in the capital requests. Make a motion to accept article three and 3.2. Okay. Motion by Joyce, second by me. Is there any slipping? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Processes and all this Article 4. So how would you like me to go through this? Any special way? Well, at town meeting, we're, we're going to go line by line, right? Do we do each item? Because we've done in the past. So the finance committee is has asked to um, do this as one motion, but we will have PowerPoint available to go over each request. So, so we'll present those, but it will be one vote motion. Okay. Yeah. We want to go over them tomorrow night at the PowerPoint. We could do that also. Yeah, Mr. Chief. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to accept the capital articles, which appear to be nothing in increase, no increase in taxes on those. It's borrowing and well, uh, free cash. Correct. There, there's no debt exclusions. Right. 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 They are uh, borrowing within the levy, borrowing paid for uh, paid from water receipts, borrowing paid from sewer receipts, and a few that are uh, being paid directly out of capital stabilization, free cash, and uh, water reserves, sewer reserves. I'll second Joyce's motion for discussion. Yeah, I would like to discuss. <laughs> <laughs> um. Why are we doing this as one article? If I was still the moderator, I would be deeply upset with this. Uh, I see a huge chance of uh, amendments flying all over the place to remove one of these things from the whole article. I just think it's going to be a mess. But if, if that's the way it's going to be, we'll deal with it. But I don't like it. The finance committee requested we do it all at once. Mm -hmm. do, yeah. Does Did the they select board have a choice about how that's presented? This, this is oh. it is finance, and that would be one of the things that we would discuss before the warrant was finalized as a select board, so that we could talk about something just like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and I'm so you're saying the finance committee decides how the article. Is, well, it wasn't uh, wasn't before the uh, capital. We didn't discuss it specifically at capital. And when the finance committee went over it, it was it was written. You know, this is what they discussed. And we we certainly have can have a backup backup motions and and break it out. Um, we can be prepared um, to do it differently, um, unless you're requesting. 
the, unless the board is requesting that it be done differently. I mean, I well, I hear I'll leave that saying to you. that if someone objects to one item in here and it's uniform, if you will, across town meeting, then the whole article will collapse. It Whereas could. if we do them one by one, yeah, yeah, will not all go down with one item. Yeah. So given that it was a five to zero and a four to zero to one, would have did you guys foresee any potential in disagreement from anybody in town? Yes. Absolutely. Think about the last town meeting, Amy. The capital. We, one of the items is on here because it went down because there was a discussion on town meeting. And we have to change it. Capital planning <laughs> did not talk about whether this would be one article or multiple so articles. Does that mean so we do it so it's no. only it appears that it's finance committee's I post uh, this one choice at this point in time. And if we as a select board have the option to change that, I would make a motion to make each item an individual article. Is there anybody from um, finance committee present tonight? Give me just a yeah. second. Uh, I'd, li I'd like to understand their thinking at least. Mm -hmm. if they so we, don't, we don't have to do it all at one. And actually, we meet with the finance committee prior to the town meeting next week. So we were, we were, yeah, we were actually getting so ready we for it. We were doing that. separate motions in, in anticipation. So I think Amy's watching on YouTube. She may not be in it. So I told her I might call out to her if she, if she hears me. So she may sign in. Okay, I'm, I'll keep an eye yeah. out. Nobody is in right now. Um, and then another question that I, I'm sorry, do you, are you going to keep going? No, I just, if, again, if we have the option to make this individual articles, I will make a motion to do so, but I don't know if it's appropriate. Or not. I think we could make the motion and then if it's not appropriate, we'll be discarded and if it is appropriate. It will be augmented. Okay, then I will make a motion to make Article 4 capital articles, each item an individual article. I'll second that. A motion by Randy and a second by Molly. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? All those abstaining? We'll not abstain until I see talk with oh, finance. Oh. Oh. From somebody else? Not do that. So three so zero two three zero two. And you're abstaining? I'm abstaining. Okay. Joyce and Amy are abstaining. Yeah. Um, then just for clarity, um, I got a, a phone call about the wording on um, just the raise and appropriate language. Um, someone called and wanted to make sure that I confirmed, uh, you know, this is kind of cut and paste language from previous articles and it reserve, um, refers, excuse me, to a transfer from sewer impact fees, but we're not touching sewer impact fees on this. So I think that's something we just want to make sure is clear at the forum and town meeting. Um, because there's some people who are very sensitive to the article how sewer impact fees are used. So we want to make sure that's clear. I think I have to go back to the previous thing because I don't think I'm actually able to abstain. I think you have to say yes or no unless you have a um, a oh, real reason. <laughs> so I guess I would have to say no on splitting because I can't abstain from it, right? You can't abstain unless you have like an actual reason or conflict of interest to which I do not have. So I don't think you can just abstain it up. I think I have to I, say I, no, right? I don't think you have to have a reason if you want to abstain. The reason would be that you don't have enough. That you don't have enough information, information as a reason to abstain. So. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, That's nice. <laughs> no, I just I didn't think that you were allowed to abstain. Sure. Because you didn't have to be controversial or whatever. So I think I got a real reason. Um, that's a reason. Jane, Susan Vlatsky is, has her hand raised to, to, to can I mute? All right. Susan, do you have something to add? <clears throat> Give her just a second. It's cozy in here. Yeah. I, I'm just a little concerned that if we move all of these to individual items, it becomes a menu 
for pick and choose to departments or uh, you know venues you like. Uh, whereas each one of these items on here um, have become imperative. It's to a point where we don't, we're not going to be able to plow our streets, or we're not going to be able to do certain things that we need to to be able to provide as public service. Yeah, and Sue, and I don't think, I mean, whether, I mean, certainly based on on what I know about the particular yeah. predominant items or DPW related. I think what's imperative is that, you know, Scott and, and anybody else is present to advocate for and answer any questions that people have. Um, I would hope that this but, would pass, you know, in its entirety, but I think we're just talking about how to approach it, it just in case somebody, because it can go the other way, right? Somebody can get upset about one particular line and then next thing you know, there's a very split town meeting and the whole thing would run the risk of going down is, is my concern. And, and Molly, I absolutely agree with you. And particularly if you think about when the police and fire uh, public safety generators weren't uh, weren't allowed yeah. because uh, somebody didn't want to do a mower. Um, uh, you know, I, I'm that's what that concerns me. Jane? Yes, Deanna. Yeah, um, Susan's accurately uh, conveying what the, uh, I think what was expressed to at Finance Committee, I'm sort of remembering a little bit better now that they felt everything was so important that they wanted to convey that we, we need all of this. And I think there was a message in it from them. So, I mean, your points are, you know, you've got your points to make too, but I'm, I'm that was their it, reason. It was both capital and finance. And, yes. and we, we are prepared to address each one. Um, we, we are we're going to have PowerPoint and each person, each department or, or committee that has requested something will have PowerPoint to go over as those questions come up. But will, will they have that tomorrow for the forum? Yes. Okay. Great. Also, if I could say the, uh, the the fact that the motion is uh, groups it all together doesn't mean they won't be presented individually. It would just be, you know, they, well, they certainly can talk about each one and then move to the next and then move to the next and move to the next. That's how it would be perceived. Right. So it will all be addressed. And then the motion to cover everything might still be a good way to approach it if there's general agreement. So, um, so we currently have a motion that says that we want to do them individually that mm -hmm. passed. Do we want to change that or leave that standing? I, I mean, I, prepared, yeah. I want to leave it standing, but I think yeah. we need to find out from town council who even has the, it's not clear to me who has the authority to change it. I honestly thought it was the town moderator. I mean, I sat on finance. I don't ever remember finance dictating how the, right. it, the it, motion went. It was a conversation. I remember either you or Kirk or Brian in the past would say, somebody would stand up at town meeting and say, can we take these individually? Yeah, yeah. Or it's always, in my tenure, it was always individual. Yeah. And again, I, I hear what everybody's saying. I, I agree that all this stuff is very important. We need every bit of it. But I, I just envision somebody wanting one, not wanting one thing, and proposing an amendment. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to, I see that as turning really uh, ugly mm -hmm. in terms of just getting it all understood and straightened oh. out and all that stuff. So that's what makes me nervous. And I, I agree. Again, we need all this and I will advocate for every single one of these. And hopefully the, the the people at town meeting will agree that we need all this mm -hmm. but to somebody's point we don't want to lose it all because somebody's not happy that we're going to spend whatever on a whatever
we had all discussed this afternoon that we felt we had to be ready because all we know mm -hmm. that all motions have to be in writing. So we we have to be prepared for plan B anyways. Sue would like to speak again, Sue. And honestly, Randy, at that point, I think, <clears throat> excuse me, I think what we can do is uh, present an amendment to take an item out rather than um, change the whole article. If, if I may, if you, I will contact Amy. I will contact Paul Makretsky and I will contact Kirk and say, this is the discussion last night um, and get their feedback. Mm -hmm. But I think Kirk's is probably mm -hmm. the, the one who will, could make that decision. And um, I can, we'll, I'll, we'll make the changes as he, as he recommends, but. And, and to, to Molly's point, find out if we actually have the authority to, to change what's, that aspect of the warrant and we we have a posted meeting for tomorrow night if you can get all that information then we can oh yes straighten it out priority it out. yeah i don't think the forum needs to have the motion so no 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 i'm just saying yeah. for for the town meeting's sake we're going to yeah. meet tomorrow night so we can we can yeah. adjust this thought right. process if we need to i see dan is dominic would like to speak Dan. Yeah. I, uh, I would recommend leaving it as one motion, but doing it like we do the annual at annual town meeting for the budget, doing a sub motion for each individual or discussion for each individual line item. So that if they don't want one thing that could be taken out and then just doing one motion at the end for everything. The, the way it's been, Dan, is that each each motion was acted on individually. We didn't discuss it and then treat it as one whole article at the end. Each one was voted on individually. Right. It's been it's been broken at other meetings into say nine or ten separate motions, but you could effectively do that at town meeting just by discussing each each purchase separately and then doing a. a one motion at the end for everything that was approved. Hmm. So that kind of was the intent. Yeah, I think that's that was the what idea. you're talking about, right? All right, well, find out what you can for us, please. Mm -hmm. And we'll absolutely. Thank you. So, will we have this discussion before the forum? Well, do we want, I mean, yeah, I mean, and do we want to vote before I, the forum? I think we can vote on the the article it's just the procedure that we're discussing right i don't think we have an issue with the article itself right. just the mm -hmm. procedure okay so we're leaning on you because like scott's not even here tonight to talk about anything if there were questions so i'm just assuming you guys have fully vetted everything and yeah i mean he he's talked about all this stuff it's you know all the equipment that he's asking to replace is stuff that is either at or very near the end of its life uh they can't get parts it costs too much to fix uh the vector for instance that we have doesn't work and apparently that's a very useful machine uh an interesting note on some of these one ton trucks that's that are on here is that there is a right now there's a two-year wait before you can get one of these things so if we approve the money for it on the 27th it won't get spent until the truck comes in is that correct mm -hmm. so that could be two years from now and and some we of the other stuff until then. is in a similar situation there, there's one or two things he thought that he could get relatively quickly but everything else is on i don't want to call it back order but it's just crazy so randy the only other question i have then for capital planning is um were there other items that were not moved forward for approval? No. So this was we, everything we, that was- Everything we have, yeah, this was everything that was brought before capital planning. Okay. All right. All right. Article five. Article five. I'm sorry, yeah. so you're not gonna vote on it tonight at all? Yeah, I think I'll make a motion to approve. 
Article 4. So I'm sorry, actually, it was motioned by Joyce Molly for discussion. So you actually just need to take the vote. Oh, I'm great. sorry. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Thank you. Okay. Article 5. These are prior year bills from FY22 that um, did not come in until after July 1st. Uh, by law, we cannot pay bills past the fiscal year. They have to go to town meeting to get approved. Motion to approve Article 5. Second. Second by Amy. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Unanimous. Article 6. The, the that is CPA extensions. That is, uh, if you remember, their articles um, now say that it has to be completed within two years. If not, you have to come back for an extension. Um, so that is the library window and bracket and Hockenham Cemetery fence to be extended. Motion to accept Article 6. Second. Motion by Joyce, second by Randy. Further discussion? Aye. Go ahead. That's the question first. Yeah. No, all, all in favor. All in favor. <laughs> Aye. 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 Okay. Yes. Abstain. Unanimous. Molly, did you have something you wanted to say? No, no, no. Okay. I just was waiting to say. She just couldn't. She couldn't <laughs> wait to say I. Okay. Article seven. So um, the next few ones are all CPA requests. So I I can read them, but uh, I I don't. I can't answer any questions on those. Those would go to CPA. So this is just funding that was approved that similar, was not used and is coming back. Same similar thing that yes. Linda does. Yes. Mm -hmm. Motion to accept Article 7. I pass. Motion by George, second by Amy. Any further discussion? Aye. Look, she All those in favor. <laughs> Aye. <laughs> Article eight. I, I actually can because I'm. I, I've been working with Alan on this one. Um, this is for um, actually it's, it was a couple art alternates that were on the original scope of work um, that came in over what was allocated for it. So this is to with the hopes of um, being able to add a couple of those alternates to the hot. Still CPA money for still CPA. Mm -hmm. Yep. Motion to accept Article eight. Second. Motion by Joyce, second by Amy. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? All those abstaining? Unanimous. Article 9. Tapkins Playing Fields. That's a request from the schools. Motion to accept our Still CPA. Time. Still CPA, sorry. Second. And just for discussion, yes. so this is the first time I think we've yeah, ever done yes. I think that's important to say. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. really different from what we've say ever done it. at town meeting. Um, we're borrowing. Uh, this is We've discussed this before, um, but this is the first time we've ever put into practice yeah. the mm -hmm. ability for us to borrow against CPA funds. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you notice in the um, article language, you'll see funded through borrowing um, of $750,000 from the CPA. So, so they're leveraging the excess funding that is in the account, right? Uh, they, they they have sufficient funds to pay it out, right? Away, but but it, they're, they're leveraging it to, to borrow, it, yeah, uh, right, for other purposes and pay it back over either ten or fifteen years. We've uh, David Eisenfeld did go and speak with them at their meeting, and he's provided updated schedules for them based on the amount that they decided to borrow. Um, he encouraged a certain amount of borrowing so that we could they would maintain the capital um, in the account. Yeah. And uh, so there, this is kind of a compromise vote that they ended up with. So it's a, we'll, we'll see how it works out for them. And Linda, at town meeting, I'm, you mean, I've, I watched the um, presentation by David Eisenthal mm -hmm. when he did that, but I'm sure there'll be people at town meeting who'll have questions. Is he going to be there or will uh, CPA he or you? planning to be there. Um, I think that Mary Fair has an excellent grasp of it, mm -hmm. yeah. and um, he present he uh, presented it one week, and I think they they took uh, until the next week to sort of uh, to to think about it and then discuss it. And well, then I wasn't at the second meeting. 
I, I know uh, I know Susan was, um, but um, they I, I, I think they they understand. And oh, you're wanting to know whether the others, waiting. yeah. Um, I can't remember what you're asking about, about explaining it to uh, whether David Eisenthal would be there to explain it to the text. Just is somebody. that what? You're, yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the, I wasn't expecting him to be if there. If this gets approved, then would you be the one yes. that goes out and does the borrowing? Yes. And so you would have a general idea at town meeting if somebody asks of. Kamali's point, the, the terms, the payments, blah, blah, blah. Yes, we have schedules. Uh, we have payment schedules. Uh, of being conservative, I think estimate at 4.25% interest, which is probably a little high. Um, but we don't know. They probably won't, they won't be borrowing this year, maybe borrowing next year. Um, and uh, how much it would be each year, depending whether they borrowed for 10 or 15 years. So... Yes, we have those scheduled. I don't have them here with me, but there is a significant difference between the two, but there's also a big difference, like $100,000 difference of an interest, which is sure. why they want to make it on the shorter sure. side. So yeah. um, I think they've considered all of these these points. Um, that's not going to be a town meeting decision, though, whether we're how how we're going to be doing the borrowing. Right, right. They just say whether we borrow or not. Right. And right. it'll be borrow $750,000, but I will work with CPA to make sure it's uh, that this is... Uh, the way that they would want it, they wouldn't put them on a longer or shorter term than they were comfortable with. And why was CPA not unanimous on this? Because uh -huh. it's a committee. Two abstentions, isn't it? Yeah, I I was one of the original members of the CPA, and quite frankly, I'm amazed that they voted to do this because we always said we were never going to do that. Mm -hmm. um, never is used anymore. Right, maybe. but <laughs> I think that. To Linda's point, it's it's good to have X amount of dollars in the bank, so to yes. speak, so that if a, a project comes up that needs to be funded, the money is there. So I don't think this is a bad idea. And it, um, right. the payment comes out of the CPA fund anyhow, correct? It is within the stream of income of what the payments are within. They're like 70, 90, 70 to $90,000 a year, depending on which way they go, as, as I, it's my best memory of it. Um, but that is well within the stream of income yeah. that, that CPA right. takes in each year. Right. So they're not going to be going down further into the principal to pay it each year. They're not. It's going to come out of they the annual. Have, so they'll money. be able to maintain right. um, a stable principal. And that affects our bond rating, the amount of money that we have set aside. So uh, that's a factor as well. Um, that um, You asked about it. That, that, too, is an abstention, not an anti. Right? Okay. It's 402 is the vote. So I don't yeah. think anyone present was against Okay. Yes. I'll make a motion to approve Article Nine. Second. Yeah. Motion by Molly, second by Randy. I think I already. It was already motioned by Joyce and seconded by Amy. <laughs> yeah. So you just you just need to, to vote. Is there any further discussion? <laughs> All those in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay. Opposed. All those abstained. You know. Thank you. Article Ten. So I'm going to address 10 and 11. It came to my attention today that both of these um, articles do not need to be on the warrant. And it was a misunderstanding of um, that it had to be on the special town meeting. So every year after the annual town meeting gets uh, uh, gets voted, the AG office looks it over, makes sure all the articles are in line with what they need to be. So a letter came back. Um, saying that a section of the plastic reduction bylaw order, a, a small section needed to come out because it conflicts with um, the state substantive law. Um, so it needs to be disapproved and deleted. Um, that I'm still finding out, but I, but town council, I'm waiting for a response, but she and I were back and forth today about that one. That may be a motion that may be to take no action. Um, and that would get handled at, a, at the next town meeting. Um, Article 11, the same thing, that is a zoning. I know for sure that that should not have been on there and that that is uh, will get handled with the planning board. So um, those both will have no, the recommendation would be to have no action. And Kirk's aware of that. I've, I've gone over the warrant a few times with Kirk. So Kirk will be aware of that. So, you know, Sure. You don't vote on no action. So, okay. Okay. 
In Article 12 was our earlier agenda item about the climate change emergency declaration that we will bring to the new form. Okay. This is this is actually I think people need to know that it is a non-binding vote. Yes. And we don't need to take a position right we could just vote on town meeting like everybody else, right? Correct. Um so it's not monetary, it's not I don't know. Go so, uh, ahead. That, that you wouldn't because it's non-binding, you don't vote on it. Okay. Okay. We're done with the war. Hmm? We're done with the warrant. We're done with the warrant. You did not. We did not do designation of articles. All right. Designation of articles. All right. Were there articles that you would select board? So that I, actually, I'm glad you brought that up, Joyce. For the so the finance one, you would still each uh, article you would it would be assigned to a select board member. Because okay. um, I did check with Kirk and he reads the motion. Right. So it's just that there's questions about it. So the finance committee will also have somebody to answer questions as well. So. So the biggest concern, Joyce, would be the capital articles, do you think? I would think so, yeah. yes. And you're on the capital planning, so I would think. Tag, you're it. So I'm it? You're it, Randy. Yep. I figured I would be. Article four for Randy. Okay. And the budget's usually the town administrator, right? Or, or finance is not finance 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 not going administrator. To. No, I think Amy was going to do this one. And I think those are the only two. Yeah, finance will do the budgets. No. Oh no, you. I'm going to no. I'm going to do. Oh, this. you. Are I'm going to do the budgets. So, so those are the only two. Right? Hmm? Those are the only two. Yes. Yeah. CPA speaks for themselves. Correct. And yes. CPA handles them. Okay. And I assume that uh, the climate change committee will speak to the climate change. Yes. Yeah. The first thing they're going to have to speak to is an amendment. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you, ladies. Yeah. Indeed. All right. Park and recreation. I see Greg. There. Hello, Greg. Hello. You're on. Could you stop sharing screen, please? Whoever's got it up. Sure. Yeah, just a second, please. Thank you. Okay, now. Grace. Okay, Greg. Okay. Um, so we're involved, we've been involved to some degree with um, with facility reservations at the school for the the gyms and you know with with different organizations you know so soccer camps um, some just open gym that people have request um, basketball teams that are they're trying to get in there to do some workouts um, yeah I, my understanding is in the past it's just been something that that park and recreation has done for when we're contacted to do it um, it's not. Uh, required obviously people can go through the school and so i put put together a proposal where um, our department can have some degree of compensation for the the work we do in facilitating the the facility reservations for outside organizations um, the advantage for those outside organizations to come through parks and recreation um, obviously you you have to be insured to participate and use those facilities so when it's a park and recreation um, sponsored event or group um, they do fall under our insurance. Um, otherwise, they would they would provide they would they would need to provide their own. Um, in addition, when we sponsor those or, or when we do that reservation, um, that does come with some degree of, of responsibility on our end to make sure that you know the, the group that uses the facilities is is using it appropriately and you know cleaning up and and, and doing all the things that they need to do. Um, kind of the proposal is to like like I said have some degree of compensation for our department for not only the work in, in you know, doing the paperwork and, and getting everything organized and then also, you know, you know being responsible to be sure that, that they're, they're using the, the facilities appropriately. Um, what the, we're charged by the school, um, what their paperwork says is, you know, 16 to $25 per hour and additional fees may be charged. 
Um, it always kind of fluctuates. It's never exactly the same. Um, there's a lot of factors, there's a lot of variables that I don't know them all, but I know they're, you know, do they need to get custodians? Is there overtime involved? Um, are there are there expenses with that with that reservation? Some things like that. So the way it works now is I fill out the the facility reservation support, submit those to the schools. Um, they review that kind of make sure they're staffing all those things and then they get back to me with with what kind of fees are are involved um like i said our proposal would be if there are no fees involved sometimes there's not um we would collect a, a 25 per hour fee um for that for that reservation if there are fees involved then we would just um add on a 25 percent fee that, that goes into our revolving account um the money that goes into that revolving account from those reservations would be used um, kind of like the, the other money in that revolving account, but really to, to help fund our programs, you know, for, for our reservations, for, for our things, um, uniforms, um, extra things for events, things like that. So I have a question. The $25 per hour, is that for the duration of the program or for the time it takes you to do the work? Um, that's for the duration of the program, because um, there is a fee. I mean, we're, we're charged when we're charged by the school. It's based on those hours we submit, and it, it always kind of fluctuates. Um, it's so it's hard for us to kind of kind of initially in putting this together. I thought it'd be good to have something that was a, a consistent thing that everyone did that was the same. Um, you know, when when they they go through our department, um, so it, it's it's. <laughs> it's hard to make it consistent if, if there's, there's other factors that are, that are changing. Um, like I said, the only thing that, that, that we can do because those changes to either have that fee or have that percentage stacked onto it. Okay, any other questions? Yeah, Greg, can you give me an example of what somebody might use the school for through, through Park and Rec and what it typically would cost? Um, sure. Um, for example, there's a there were some individuals that wanted to get some extra work in, in the gym. Um, it was like a, a basketball coach and some players or a, a dance players. So because they, they're not insured and they don't have access to those things, they went through parks and recreation. Um, you know, I did the paperwork form. I submitted it. It got approved. There was a fee through the school um, to, to have custodians and everything. So I just, you know, kind of like what we've done in the past is I just charge that fee, whatever the school says. And then, you know, I, I pay that fee and they, they, they pay the department. Um, another example, there's a, a soccer organization that comes in and does camps consistently. Um, they go through, you know, it, it's their camps, but they go through park and rec to, to sponsor and help promote those camps and everything. So I do all the paperwork to, to get them facility reserved and, and all those things. Um, but like I said, in addition, because I, I reserve the facilities, it does fall in our department for me to go out there and, you know, be sure they're taking care of everything and everything's getting cleaned up and that, that it's all it's all run well. Um, so like I said, it, it's that's mainly what it's been. Like I said, I, I've been here for a year and there's probably been, I think, four that I can think of that this has happened with. Um, and it's been mostly the, you know, basketball team came in and did some workouts. You know, uh, a dad wanted to do some open gym time. The SOC organization is doing multiple camps. Um, they're going to do that same organization. I think is going to do two or three next year. Questions? No, it sounds like there, Carolyn, there was agreement um, between you, Greg, and, and uh, the superintendent. There's not okay. Uh, there's not an agreement with me. I mean, we've we've spoken to it, but it was it's the select board's approval. But I mean, generally, you guys talk through it. And oh yeah, absolutely. Reason. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve. You guys know there there are organizations that do rent the facilities. This wouldn't change the organizations that go directly to the school and and reserve them. You know, this is only for the people that decide to go through our department to to reserve those facilities. Okay, Sue, you had your hand up. Yeah, my only yeah, concern, my concern is, is the uninsured, uninsured um, uh, groups that that, that are going that through, are you, through you, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, if we don't have a certificate of insurance from them, naming the town of Hadley for liability, uh, uh, it all comes it on all us. Comes on so, uh, Greg, we should we can have a conversation about that. 
Okay. Well, and right as it is, Susan, we're doing this anyway. We're just not charging a fee. And we're still having people go through parks and recreation to reserve those facilities. I'm doing all this now. We're just not collecting a fee for it. Uh, yeah, but we we need to talk about it because it opens the town to greater liability. And what? <laughs> you're doing such good work, Craig. Um, and I don't I, I don't want to be you know the Debbie Downer on it, but we we need to be careful about what we open ourselves to liability on. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, to, to that point, Sue. So I'm reading this letter that says that parties reserving through our department receive the benefit of not being required to have their own insurance as it is covered by our department. Is that different than what you're talking about? Um, Randy, I don't know what you're, uh, whoops. Uh, I don't know what you're, what you're reading. I've not, I've not seen the document you're reading. Okay. Okay. Well, this is this is a letter from Greg to us, and and, and what, what it says is what I just one of the things it says is what I just read to you. It's in board docs. Okay. I mean, I can I can take a look at it, but um, it's it's nothing that I've seen before. Right. Uh, I'm just I'm just concerned we open ourselves up to additional liability. Sure. No, I understand that, and and. Uh, hopefully what is written here is reality, but if it's not, you guys can get it straightened out. So I'll make a table that. Or I think make the motion to prove subject to okay. continue. Yeah. Okay. I find it quite odd anyway that it's coming before us and not going through the school department. Um, you know, the town owns the buildings, but any of the programs that have ever been done, like CYO or soccer or outside things they never came through us the, the select board um so I'm, I'm kind of sitting here going well what's this all about i mean we never set really any policy we at the school department years ago we set the amount that we would charge uh park and rec to um use our facilities and charge them the hourly rate for the janitors and things of that nature but we never I, I, we never came to the town to approve these things because we always felt like um, at that point and I know things change over the years but I'm talking about usually anybody that uses our facilities with our permission falls under the town umbrella for insurance um, for buildings but you know maybe I'm wrong at this point but that's what it used to be and an outside uh, entity, Joyce, not so much. Uh, so if you allow it, you take them under your umbrella. Greg, how imperative is we is it that we vote on this tonight versus at our next meeting? Um, it, it's not. I mean, I've been doing it for, for the whole time I've been here. You know what I mean? Um, the only difference is in this, and the reason this is being proposed, is because I, our department's never been compensated for doing this for outside entities. Um, the, the only di the difference in, in this proposal is that our, our department begin to take collect a fee for the, for the work we're doing to, to, to reserve these for outside entities. And can we have somebody look into our insurance and see? Well, let's see. Oh, I know, but I mean, I'd like to have somebody... Sure. That was Amy's suggestion to table it until a subsequent meeting. Yeah. That's fine. Let's... Do we have to even have to vote off, or do we have to because it has to do with money? Well, no, we're not charging for the school. Well, no, pardon, no, pardon, no, pardon, no, 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 no. Well, but the school departments are purview. No, it's, you, we're, you we're only having it because park and rec. It's looking for so, so I think that uh, the school it's department park and rec department should be yeah. hundreds. The town should, should say why are in de independent groups going through park and rec instead of directly through the school? Because that's what used to happen from what I hear you say. We didn't really have individuals. Well, like CYO, basketball. CYO. Yeah. Counting in baseball. Anyway, <clears throat> I, I think the idea of tabling this until there's more information makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm in favor of you getting compensated, Greg. Right. Just iron out the details a little bit more. Okay. Well, what are these 
Well, we need you to talk with Sue about liability insurance for the town. And the other question I would have is, if in the past these groups went through the school, why have they changed to come through you? Just a question. Um, I know, I, and, I, and I'm, I'm learning about this too. Um, like I said, I, I've, I've done this probably for four, you know, four or five organizations in, in just this year. So it's not all the time, um, you know, like CYO and the, uh, the clubs that go through the school, they don't go through me, right? It's just some of these outside, you know, people want to rent the gym, the, the soccer outside organization, things like that. Those are the ones that have, that have gone through Park and Rec. Um, my understanding has been a, a large part of that is the insurance issue. Um, people can't just Joe Schmo off the street, can't just call the school and say, hey, I want to reserve the, the gym from this time to this time um, because of the liability insurance, insurance issues. Um, I, I think that's the biggest thing we'll take them through our, de through our department. So, so that being so like said, we're think... doing this anyway. I mean, right now we're doing this anyway. You know, I'm reserving it and it's falling under us either way. The only change this would be is we'd be collecting a fee for that. So, so that being said, the insurance is a real issue. And if people are able to come through you and not have to pay insurance, that's a, 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 a serious added value to what they're getting. And that should uh, impact the fees being charged. Well, wait, all right, let's put let's this table on the it. table and continue it. When you have the data, let us know and we'll put it on the next that agenda. Sounds good. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. Thank you. All right, DPW Building Feasibility Co Committee mm -hmm. Appointments. Carolyn, where are we on that? So we are trying to get the uh, a representative from the community, um, okay. but we have not had yeses. So we are still looking for those two. You should have one. He didn't. Uh, no. He told me he was going to do that yesterday. So what I'd li like to ask for consideration, just so we can, um, Weston and Samson can start planning some of the outreach. If we could, we have five, which is a which is wonderful. That's an odd number. We're only waiting for two more. If we can continue to look, um, and if you have anybody that you think would be good, please reach out to them. Or, um, out there or just or qualified or interested. I, I hate to use the word term good because you know. You so, anybody, you have to have some qualifications about mm -hmm. what's going. <laughs> and we need two. So if we get more than two, I'll bring. We'll bring them to the select board, and you guys can make a decision. So, but I would, if you would, be willing to. Um, appoint those that are they are um either committee members or staff which is scott mccarthy gary berg tommy quinlan randy Iser, andy kapaki um and if you would be willing to start with that so we could at least give the go-ahead i'll make a motion to appoint the dpw facilities feasibility committee with the five individuals that carolyn just mentioned with two community member slots pending second Motion by Molly, second by Mimi. Any further discussion? To the the two community members will have to get voted in at a subsequent. Pointed in, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I need to quiet. We're taking it. <laughs> Do we, for the next thing of Board of Health, do we want the Board of Health Department up here also? I have chairs Basis, for them. Spaces for them here and I have here. I one here. I thought I was getting it. Yeah, as soon as we get our numbers back. Two members. That's right. You're bad. Don't see your back. Whose bag is that? It's not my bag. But you can take it home and have it any. How are you? I'm worse. I promise you're not contagious. I don't have a fever and I do not have COVID. I have tested. I just have a cough. Thank you. 
I can, I'm not offended. I'll just sit out here in the audience and enjoy it from a, oh. Mm -hmm. We're going to need that for interviewees. Okay, we need one there. Yeah. And yeah. Oh, she's. All right, we're all here. So we're going to call. Yeah, one. We're going to call. We could call there. Okay, we're going to call. call the Board of Health meeting to order. We'll take a roll call. Margaret Mastrangelo. Yep, present. Susan Mosler. Okay. So as a joint meeting, is Board of Health running it since it's theirs or are we running it? As You're running it together. Running it together. Mm -hmm. yeah. Would you like to start the candidates in any special order? All right, alphabetically. Emma Dragon, would you please come up to the center table with the microphone? Right. Well, wouldn't it be it's Joseph Boyd? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not reading the list of things that alphabetically. Oh, I'm sorry. My error. Okay. You're first. We're going alphabetical. So, boy, are we all not with the program tonight, huh? <laughs> I'm reading what's on my list here. Seriously. Does it make sense to have the other candidates not in the room at at the time of an interview? No, I mean it's a public meeting. Right? Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's just you can go out there and watch it on the porch. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's only two asserts. Oh, before we start. Yes. Um. I uh, have a. An appearance of a conflict of interest with Mr. Boydsworth. He is a client of mine. I talked to the Ethics Commission yesterday, uh, went through the whole process with them. They said that it wasn't an, an issue. Just fill out the form that was required, which I did. I brought it to the town clerk's office this morning. So I just want that out there. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Joe, tell us about yourself. Okay, good evening, everybody. Um, <clears throat> for those that don't know who I am, Joe Boyster. I live at Six Mile Corner Road. Um, my wife, Shelly, and I own North Happy Sugar Shack. This springtime, we are 20 year of business serving our you know, traditional pancake breakfast and fruits and maple syrup at, at our family farm and business. I uh, grew up in Hadley my entire life, went to Hopkins Academy. Um, have three children. One who's a, my daughter's a U.S. Marine and my son's a plumber. My youngest is still at a vocational high school. Um, so my interest in Board of Health is because I'm a business owner, I'm um, a happy resident. Um, I've got some experience, you know, obviously the food industry. Um, worked a year and a half at the wastewater treatment plant here in town of Happy, so I have some interest i need some knowledge with with that stuff there um i think it'd be a good candidate um business owner in town know a lot of people um you know know different business people and, and i think i could add two more health um, i'm also a volunteer on the happy fire department serve safe certified which is not very hard to become but i mean i'm, I'm certified um Another item about me, you know, I'm a member of the Mass Medical Association. I was a board director um, for three years and became the president for a three year term. Uh, that entitled me to out Boston during the maple sugar season, just the governor for proclamation of, you know, it's, it's maple sugar season. Do a little spiel on behalf of, you know, Massachusetts and the Maple Association. So, you know, I've kind of been around and done a few things like that, but I think it's very important for some of us business owners to start stepping up a little bit here in our community and adding some, you know, advice and, and getting on some of the boards. And so that is primarily you know, a good reason why I'm interested, along with what I think I can be helpful to our community. Yeah. I know a lot of farmers. I know there have been some incidences in the past. For example, let's say 
somebody is a newer member in our community and let's say a, a farmer is licensed and put some kind of um, insecticide or fungicide or something on a field and maybe a concern arises. Maybe, I, you know, I could be beneficial by knowing the farmer, asking for the MSDA, MSDS sheets, material safety sheets, to just see if what the complaint was, was it worth discussing, you know, discussing which a lot of it is worth discussing, but could we bridge a big problem just by asking the simple question, what was applied to the farmer? You know what I'm saying? To get back to the resident that had the concern and say, okay, we did a follow-up for you. We asked for the MSDS sheets. This is what it was. You should have a concern or you shouldn't have a concern. You know, just so I think I have some knowledge that I could offer to the board and our community, um, you know, to help out. So that is why I'm interested in, in coming out. Any questions from anyone? Are we um, doing these interview questions or how are we? We do have interview questions. Or are those? Hmm? They're part of board docs. Yep. I mean, I'm, is that how we're, are we just rolling through these or were these here for? Are we going to ask them all at the end? Right. Are we asking them all or? Well, some of them he's already answered. <clears throat> where are they from? Board docs. Board docs. The, the three board resumes and then the interview question. Okay. Should be last over here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and board of Health, did you have a process that you wanted to? Well, I have, I have, a, I have a question that I'd like to ask each sure. um, yeah. candidate. Um, Joe, with the understanding that the authority and delineation of responsibilities for the Hadley Board of Health comes from the state of Massachusetts as opposed to coming from our local town government. What do you see as the primary tasks of the Board of Health and what experience and training do you bring to work with those tasks? So the experience, I guess, good, or what I would say is 20 years of being in business, serving food to the public. Uh, and, I, and I am aware that, you know what I'm saying, we are just enforcing and going by a you know state standard you know bylaws and laws and we don't make them up but you know we need to be here to enforce them um and i think common sense and knowledge of being a business for as long as i have brings a lot to the table and what i see and don't see or you know um nobody's perfect um, i've always learned every time my business has been inspected i've always appreciated a negative comment or a issue if we had it because that's how we grow and learn whether we're doing right or wrong. Um, so I don't think, you know, like I said, 28 years of, of serving food to the public with no complaints under our belts and, and problems, um, being in plenty of other establishments in our town, you know, whether it's from a, a farmer who bottles milk or produces ice cream to <laughs> You know, restaurants and things like that. You know, I think I would be able to get it. So, Joe, I appreciate um, the experience that you you do bring. Um, the a lot of what you're talking about, though, is done by the, a qualified health inspector, someone who's a you know has gone to school for this, and in fact, we have. Uh, at least an 18 hour a week position for someone who would do exactly those things. And, you know, as opposed to we set policy, we, we don't actually go out and do the inspections. So, you know, uh, I think what you say is interesting, but I, but I'm not, but I, I'm not so sure how much you would actually be going out. That's why we have a health inspector. Well, that is correct. And also, I partially feel we should be doing some of this in house. That's my personal opinion, also, is I don't see why we shouldn't be helping out that inspector and, and, and seeing what is going on within our community. If we are acting as a board, you know, I, I think it would be beneficial. I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm. I'm understanding what then your role would be. Are you saying you that you think board members should be going out and doing 
um, health inspections and assessments and. Well, I, I, I am saying I don't think that would be an okay thing for us to be doing also to be getting out, you know what I'm saying, and witnessing what is going on. I don't see anything wrong with it. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. <clears throat> Any other questions? No. Oh, yeah, last one. Um, so, let's see. So, um, Joe, if you were in a situation where you had a, it was a three person board of health, right? And there's a, a two to one split vote, and you were on the on the one side of it, right? You were the the underdog on the vote. Yeah. Um, how would you handle that in terms of, you know, carrying forward the will of the board of health at that point? You know. Well, it would probably depend on the situation of the vote, what was, you know, going on, what were we voting? Yeah. Does that make sense? I mean, I, I guess I... Well, well, one of the, the things with being a board member is that, uh, you know, we all get fired up about stuff, right? But sometimes at the end of the day, you're on the, the kind of the losing end of things, if I can put it that way, right? So whether it's on the select board, there's a three to two vote. Well, well but we always say that certainly the best interest would be for the town to have your community for the health or wellness of whatever that situation. I mean, if you're referencing a referencing a vendetta thing or something, no, that's no. not I'm saying <laughs> I think, if I may, what she's trying to say is, can you still support the the Board of Health if they vote against your position in something you feel strongly about? Absolutely. Okay. Is that what you were asking? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's you know, any board. It's a question we ask right. on any board. board. Right. Right. Okay. And I guess the one question, because you are a business owner and have a lot of activities that go on, so one of the questions was, which I'm just seeing for the first time, uh, do you have the time to commit to meetings, hearings, and site visits? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, being in town all your life, you know a lot of people. So how would you deal with somebody that you've known most or all of your life or even for a little bit of your life that is violating, you know, you, you had to go do an inspection if that was part of what you were doing or, or in any part of the process and they were doing something that you knew was wrong. How do you deal with it? How would you deal with that? Well, obviously, we would have to explain what are you, you know, what are you doing? And this is, you know, you're doing something wrong. And I obviously right now don't know the protocol of, of, you know, fines or what could come down the line, but obviously talk to that person or persons or business that if, if this is something wrong, you need to stop doing this and this is why. I mean, regardless of the fact whether I know a person or not, if somebody's, uh, Dumping oil in the Connecticut River, whether I know them or not, that's totally wrong. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, yes, the, the answer is, you know, you'd be a different position. Unfortunately, just like everybody on the board, everybody goes, everybody goes. So, there is that fine line of knowing everybody and doing what is right for the town, the community, and, and the board. Any other questions? Um, I guess I'm a little, I, I might, maybe I'm confused, but number eight says, do you have the time to commit to meetings, hearings, and site visits? And it sounded, you guys do do site visits. No, we do not do site You visits. don't do site we visits. Have our health agent, that's the so health agent. that seems like an interesting question to ask if you can go to a site visit and it doesn't happen. Yeah, maybe that's Maybe that's the that's it. Asparagus Festival or a, a fair, and we've gone out with food product that there had always been a, you know, Board of Health inspector come out, you know, greet you that morning, check out what's going on, what are you doing, and issue a permit. And so that's where I think some of what I just spoke prior came out was 
was growing up right. with me. Yeah, we now we have a, you know, there's training requirements and certifications for a health agent. Uh, and we now have someone with those qualifications who's working part time for the town of Hanley. So there isn't anyone with the qualifications that's on the board currently? No, our qualifications, uh, you know, I mean, I have a, a medical background, um, but we don't do the sort of thing. So it's policy setting, basically, policy oversight, oversight of a um, health inspector. But basically, in terms of going out, what, what, what would happen is if, if there were a problem, mm -hmm. then the health inspector would go out, do a plan of correction, that sort of thing, talk to the person, because we're not into, you know, shutting someone down. We want, we, we want the public to be safe, and we want certain standards in that. And that, so the health inspector's job would be to, to set up for instance, that plan of correction, follow up with the individual. And then if, you know, after a number of attempts, that would that would be something that would be determined by their goodwill, their effort, how much the owner is trying to make amends and, you know, make the corrections. If there continued to be a problem, then that comes before the board. And then the board decides at that point, uh, you, know, you know, fines, what, what there's fines public hearings, or, there's, right. a whole, there's a whole there's process. There's a process in place for... for a, but, you know, much like the select board, um, you know, the Board of Health is a professional board, and we are, we're not the worker bees of the functions that the Board of Health uh, is responsible for. We're, we're in a supervisory uh, planning, visioning, and, uh, you know, a more... A, a larger overview of, of public health. So let me ask a question about that. I, I I agree with Joe. If I was sitting in that seat right now, I would be talking to you the way he was, based on what I know from a past the past board of health in this town. So are you saying that the previous board, and if I'm just asking the question, was doing their job incorrectly? No, I, 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 first of all, I wasn't here. I, you know, I, no. Um, but I think uh, times change, standards change. Uh, you know, we're moving into the, the 21st century here as far as professionalization of the Board of Health um, in many different ways. We have a health agent. Uh, you know, we now finally are getting set up for electronic permitting uh, rather than having, uh, you know, boxes of, of, you know, permits filed all around and in, in people's homes and basements. And we're, you know, really trying to professionalize and modernize the Board of Health, uh, which serves the people of Hadley well. Okay. And who well, maybe disconnect though from the public? Is that what you were trying to indicate that you would like to be maybe more connected with the public? So if you don't mind, if I could speak real quick here. Yeah. Um, I guess after 28 years of being in business, I have seen some different inspectors come through. You know what I'm saying? It was either the Amherst inspector covering for somebody, you know, on our board in town and, and this and that. I really, really felt that our board of health had more hands on in the community inspecting and doing. And because of learning what I just learned tonight, more of hiring out people who are hired highly educated or in that field of doing that. Um, at this point, I would like to withdraw my my thoughts of even being on the board. I thank everybody um, for your time tonight. Okay, Joe, just a minute. You're correct in what the board used to do, but what has come down from the state has put a huge liability on the town if we are not absolutely dotting our I's and crossing our T's in terms of health. Totally fine, totally respectful. I respect that. I just didn't realize how little in house we were not doing anymore. Yeah. And I thought I could be an asset to this, but after hearing this, I will say myself, I would probably not be the right team. So thank you all. Thanks, Joe. Yep. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe, thank for you. coming in. Sorry, you waited That's so great. long. Uh, to consider the um, DPW building feasibility study. Uh, what about you've you got another you got another yes I know Emma 
Okay, hey, tell us about yourself. I am Emma Dragon. I'm also born and raised here in Hadley. Um, graduated from Hopkins, moved to Connecticut for a short period of time for my early adulthood, and then moved back to town in 2011. I now 12 year old who is one. Um, I have previously been on a work help, um, which I had accepted a, a professional role with the town of Harris as their health director. Um, so stopped my uh, seat here and had me for that, um, to, trying to involve conflict of interest. Um, and then with this opening, certainly, and no longer being with Amherst because of just different visions um, and a new opportunity that came up um, due to family concerns of mine and time and everything like that. Um, this position was open um, and I was interested in that based on my past experience. I'm super nervous. Why? No. <laughs> <laughs> So I guess before we get too far into continuing this, we already had one candidate walk out. Um, are your expectations from is anything that you've heard tonight, anything new to you, anything you, that you might have concerns about, or what are your expectations? I suppose. So I think from when I joined the board in 2018 to now in 2022, it's a totally different can of worms in terms of boards of health and what they can do regulatory wise, policy, liability, and everything like that post COVID. Um, I think that uh, when I joined the board, um, we were doing the best that we could with the very little resources that we had. Um, we were not doing things as, as robust as we could uh, with more support um, for our people in town that aren't just residents, but that also come into our town as vendors for all our restaurants, um, with making sure that we were doing inspections at the appropriate cadence that we should be, and with the appropriate um, education to back that. Um, so, I mean, it it is it has changed a lot, even in the last, is that six, four years? for kind of what's expected. Any other questions? Board of Health? Do you want to ask your question? Oh, I guess I would just ask the same question. With the understanding that the authority and delineation of responsibilities for the Hadley Board of Health come from the state of Massachusetts, mm -hmm. what do you see as the primary tasks of the Board of Health and what experience and training do you bring to the position? Um, so in terms of previous training and experience, um, I did go through the, when I was on previously the Board of Health here, the Board of Health Academy through the um, Mass um, Association for Health Boards, um, which is free online modules uh, for like housing inspections for awareness. Um, and that way, when there wasn't an inspector, if someone was out or for some catastrophe or whatever, you could, what I'm just referring to as like pinch hit or kind of go in there right away. Or certainly if if there was a house, sudden housing concern um, when maybe fire or, or another agency was going in um, for a safety evaluation, for a wellness evaluation. Um, in my role with the town of Amherst, I, I got to experience public health and in a much more professional manner with other people, teams, um, departments that were supporting us in the way. And um, also got to experience a, a board of health outside of Hadley um, function in that more policy um, and regulation and future vision way of it. Um, and, and actually learned that a lot of other boards of health aren't hands in anymore because of the liability. So it was interesting for me to have eyes on that other part as well. 
I, I would like to add, too, that I think what makes Hadley so unique is the fact that we have an incredibly busy Route 9 corridor and um, many restaurants, food, you know, whether they are, soup, you know, down from, you know, small mom and pop establishments to, um, um, you know, chain stores, chain restaurants, that sort of thing. And I believe in Jennifer, you maybe you remember this, but I think we had something like over 130 some odd food establishments and restaurants here in town. Now, we we don't compare inside. And we our population might be 5,000, 6,000 uh in, in line with say Southampton or uh you know, another small town. But we well, we have more food vendors than Amherst, and we have more right. food vendors than uh, Northampton. Yeah, and and we don't have a we'll full-time have health full, inspector. We'll have multiple full-time That's why our employees. taxes are so low. Yeah, right. <laughs> Thank God for the, businesses. Yeah. The challenge with food especially is um, the mass health boards have like a flex um, of what a recommendation between one and three or maybe even four times a year that these institutions, restaurants, whatever you want to call them, um, should be being inspected. Um, obviously sushi being a very high risk one where they recommend at least three times. And then if you've had a challenging restaurant or business, you know, maybe checking in on them more often um, or what, maybe once a year if it's uh, a low risk environment that hasn't had any poor outcomes with an inspection previously. Um, I, I do agree with everyone on this on the select board and as well as the Board of Health that um, in my experience that having a connection to our community and being able to, I feel like I can't effectively communicate right now very well and formulate my thoughts, but being able to be a present voice to at least just listen to people, even if we can't give them the answer that they wanna hear um, because of whatever situation that they're on, most people just wanna be heard and acknowledged. Um, and sometimes you have to give them tough news, but no one else, I don't think anybody ever likes giving anyone tough news. Mm -hmm. So what do you know about Title V? So I went through the class and I need to retake the test. <laughs> um, we have our, our health inspector, inspector is getting Title V certified. Yeah. This fall, our I health agent, yeah. our health. Yeah. Because that is, you know, a big major part of our town is yes. Title V. Yeah, he'll be starting that. More He'll be able to do that starting uh, the end of November. Okay. But having a letter is important. Sorry. No, oh, no, it's okay. I've got a question for Emma, and then afterwards, I actually have a question for the, the Board of Health when we're done interviewing Emma. Um, Emma, time commitment. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> tell us why you would have time to do this. Oh, so I love being on the Board of Health before. Mm -hmm. um, it's obviously a field that's incredibly meaningful to me and um, certainly keeps calling me back um, in terms of community um, and being able to serve our community. Um, I do have three kids and a spouse, um, but with that being said, in the past year and a half, a, a huge amount of um, time that was being used um, for my parents and everything is obviously not being utilized at this time. Um, and certainly in the legacy of my parents, uh, you know, they were just really looking forward for me being able to be more involved in the town when the time came. Thank you. Okay. Another question for Board of Health? <laughs> so many questions. It's, but I, that, well, and of course, Emma's still sitting here, but oh. I, I guess a question for Board of Health. Um, so, you know, there's a bit of a pendulum swing if you've been around here for a while. <laughs> so, so the pendulum swing, to, to your point, was previously, and I don't think this was uncommon in small towns at all, uh, who couldn't afford or didn't choose to fund, we'll put it that way, um, health inspector, a full-time health inspector, part-time whatever. Um, you know, there were a lot of responsibilities wound up falling to some of the members of the Board of Health who were rolling up their sleeves, as, as Joe thought, you know, when he came in here, because he remembers um, Dick Tessier in particular, 
Um, and, and Greg. And yeah, so clearly part of that pendulum swing that I think has become far more obvious to the general population because of the pandemic is that the true role of the Board of Health, as you're saying, is policy making and kind of that oversight and bringing skill sets to the table that allow you to, to do that. Um, that said, at the moment, we still, we have a part-time health inspector. And I know that the inspections department in general, you know, is call it pulling their hair out for lack of, I mean, they're completely, um, you know, we're just not getting all of the inspections done that need to be done, right? As far as the food inspections? Y yeah, I mean, just- We, we, we will. We will. We, the health agent just started uh, and ended up having COVID. So we missed mm -hmm. a week and a half for that and mm -hmm. then had parents coming from out of town. So he, he's been, a, it, it was two weeks. He just, we just hired him. It's been two weeks, but he's, um, he's, uh, he's very professional. He's got a lot of energy. He's, uh, very positive. Oh, he, yeah. I've heard nothing but, but good yeah. things. Yeah. But I guess my question is, are we, Susan, are we going to need more hours to get, to do Title V, to do, uh, re restaurant inspections, to do housing? Mm -hmm. Yes, Molly, we, yeah. we are going to need more. Um, and I think we all have to understand that, you know, these are trained, paid professionals. Mm -hmm. Um, I have no business going doing food inspections. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not trained in it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the same thing with housing inspections. I mean, these, and I, you know, I know none of, you know, we all, I live here, I pay taxes. I don't want to spend more, you know, more money than we need to, but I think we also have to look at the revenue that these food vendors are bringing to the town here. And, mm -hmm. you know, we, if we want to have this busy corridor, we have, I, they said 130, I think it's more, I think it's almost 170, uh, food vendors uh you know at any over the period of a year it, it is bringing a lot of money you know that's our our tax base here into this town and our responsibility in hadley not mine all of us is to make sure that you know that that septic is done properly to make sure that when somebody goes into the restaurant that they're not going to get food poisoning um mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, to me, it's the yin and the yang. I mean, if we want, which we do, we want all the food vendors, we want the restaurants, we want the tax money coming in. We, we have a responsibility on the other side of that. Yeah. Well, well, I guess my, my question was from your standpoint, I mean, you've got two sitting, sitting board of health members. Is there a reason that you, you wouldn't want somebody who, you know, would be willing to get certified that could pick up some of that slack to be on the board of health. And and again, personally, I think we've got plenty of work <laughs> to go around for a full time inspector at this point. I'm not questioning yeah. that. I mean, I'm just asking about. I, I think that's a philosophical yeah. question as far as you know what is the role. And I think you know Hadley is such a small town; it's hard to compare. But you know, if you look at Amherst, you look at Northampton, or you know, the majority of of municipalities, towns in the state, the, the board of health, the boards of health are oversight, review, policy, uh, that type of a role. Um, you know, kind of like the select board here. Um, you know, you're not out doing the road work. Um, and I think uh, ideally you want on the board of health is, you know, health professionals or people who have experience in public health and, and who can who can vision, you know, where we want to be moving forward to. Um, we are part of a shared grant from the states for giving out uh, uh, grants to shared uh, initiatives, and we are part of 16 other towns here in Western Massachusetts. It's based in Northampton, um, and uh, there we just had a meeting today. I go to those meetings once a month for the consortium, and they're applying now for funds that hopefully uh, will come through at the beginning of the year, and, and the plan would be to use those to support 
food inspections and septic inspections out here in Western Massachusetts, particularly in the small towns like Hadley, where we really do need the help. So, um, you know, that may really take a, a chunk of the burden off, off of us locally uh, through state funded programs. And I'm, I'm optimistic about that. But in the meanwhile, we have to get the work done. Mm -hmm. Do we charge for inspections? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We do when, when oh, you so. say do we charge for inspection like a so, regular food inspection? Not yeah, for an inspection. initial food inspection. No, no nobody charges. No, we we have, not allowed. I, I believe you're not we allowed. We have reviewed all of our permitting and, and charges though, and we've um we've brought them uh to parity with with the local our our neighbors. Some of them were under and we brought them up to parity. So you don't charge for the initial, but if you have a follow-up, you can charge for that second We are inspection. in the process. Of, we do have a policy, but we're going to re revisit it. And um, I, certainly not the first inspection and a follow-up we'll have to discuss. After that, if after a follow-up they're still in violation, then I think we should have significant fines. Uh, but I think, you know, we want to be more educational and Ben is our health agent is really very positive about that. Uh, you know, not going in to shut anybody down, but, you know, having conversations and explaining and, and the whys and what needs to be done. And, uh, you know, then you go back and see, see if, if, if the work's been, been done. So. So. I was just going to ask you one last question. I'm still in the hot seat. Sorry. So based on your current knowledge, past experience, and being a town resident here, um, what do you think the biggest priorities for the Board of Health should be in the next year? So certainly food safety is one. Um, making sure that we're doing the inspections that the way that they were to be intended. Um, and then engaging with uh, whether it's state or federal partners, the FDA has a food grant that could be applied for um, to help support inspections and stuff like that as well. Um, but really looking in terms of those new outs outsourced fundings for public partnerships um, to be able to support and, and hopefully advance um, the amount of support that the Board of Health is giving comparative to like other areas too. Um, I think it does kind of bridge not just into food and Title V, because certainly a lot of the town is on septic, that's for sure. Um, but also water, right? Water comes up a lot. Thank goodness we have a great water department, um, but that definitely is a concern. Fluoride is a regular theme that comes up every six, several years with questions um, and a knowledge in terms of that is important um, as well as those forever chemicals um, that they're looking for now in our water systems. Um, and then I lost it. Was that lost? That's okay. That was enough, I think. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? So I don't, there was another, there was another candidate at the online. I don't see no. him. Thank you. Withdraw. Um, so they were all informed that they would be coming back to this meeting. I did a follow-up and um, Michigan Chicago, we said it needed at least a week's notice. Um, but as I understood, they were at Burns he said what? a month ago that they would call back to back after this meeting. He needed to be so, uh, he, he did. He is not here tonight. Yeah, All right. Yeah, that's all the information. That's fine. No, that's fine. <laughs> so that's a wrap. That's a wrap. Yeah. So given one candidate, do we vote? Do we approve? Do we, how do we I mean, go forward? What, what is the Board of Health's pleasure? Your candidate. Your recommendation, right? Um, well, I would recommend that we vote tonight. Okay. Absolutely. All right. There appears to be one candidate. So, you may have a motion. No, Second. Motion to approve is by Amy, second by Joyce. 
All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? I'm abstaining just because I wrote on my form that I would not vote unless there was a tie. So I'm staying out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no tie. No tie. <laughs> um, all those uh, we did opposed, abstaining. Uh, aye. <laughs> all right. One abstention. Board of Health, are you voting? Yes. Um, Make a motion. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Did you have your hand up? Yeah. Oh, yes. 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 Okay. Welcome back, Emma. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. All right. Moving right along. Thank you, Council Authority, for staying forever. <laughs> Thanks for uh, everybody staying for so long tonight. All right. The Hadley Housing Authority is here, even though we are removing this item from the agenda, which I had told Mary earlier. Because, and yes, please do. We'll come up to the microphone. Why are we removing it, Jane? Because it's not at the moment in the board of the select board's position to appoint. Okay. We're not discussing it. You want to give it away now? That's right. Since it's not on the agenda. Well, we took it off. Yes, make it happen. I'm Pamela Rogers. I'm the executive director of the Hadley Housing Authority. And this is Lisa Smith Breed, and I'm on the board of commissioners at the Hadley Housing Authority. So I did see, I got an email this afternoon, this late this morning from Carolyn about um, the state appointee seat. And then when I looked, I saw this was on the agenda. So I'm here and I'm kind of wondering what's going on. Well, so the um, we would like to have a complete compliment for your board and commissioners. And it's been since the end of June when Tristan retired. And it appears that it's necessary for you to send a letter to the Department of Housing and Community Development saying there's a vacancy. Mm -hmm. Which and has been done. It's been done. And when was that done? That was done officially, uh, initially in August, and okay. then officially with a letter. Um, CC to the town of Hadley okay. on September. To the town clerk? To the town clerk, and Thank she you. also said received September 7th. Thank you. Okay. Fine. So there is a person who is really interested in being a candidate mm -hmm. for this position. Um, he came by your office, and Mary suggested he go see the town clerk. Mm -hmm. The town clerk didn't know what to do because she had no information from Department of Housing. And so the question is, do you have any um, say in how to encourage this appointment to be made? So his his information, Mr. Moser's information went, and there was also a second candidate. Moskin, that, not Moser. Moskin. Ma Moskin. Moskin, thank you. Um, there was also a second candidate that was uh, interested as well. Okay. Um, but she received a phone call and was told that somebody might not be running next year and asked her to wait. Um, so, but that informa his information packet went to the Department of Housing. I believe you were in contact with the Department of Housing as was another member of the Housing Authority, not the chairperson, okay. um, who also contacted the Department of Housing without the consent of the rest of the board. Right. Um, but his information has been given to Governor Baker's office, and okay. it is in Governor Baker's office. Okay. So, so we're just waiting for the governor to... We are, but I'm, I am here, um, Richard Whitcoast, who is the chairperson of the Hadley Board of Commissioners, right. uh, could not be here, and he asked me to speak on his behalf. Um, he's very concerned about the emails that are going around back and forth um, be, through the select board through the town administrator's office about this position and about other um, happenings of the housing authority. Um, it's actually shocking to see the Board of Health here today because the Board of Health is very similar to the housing authority. The housing authority is an independent, autonomous government agency. We do not fall under the town pattern. With the exception of our elected officials, I'm not in your budget, we're not in your budget, you can't tell it. We we can't follow your rules. We have to follow the rules of the Department of Housing and Chapter 760 CMRs. That's what we have to do. And there's been a lot of interference. 
and we need that to stop. And it, he's requesting, Richard is requesting that we have a joint meeting between the Board of Commissioners for the Town of Hadley and the uh, Select Board. That would be fine. I'm sorry, why, why did you say you were surprised to see the Board of Health here? Because we just had Reese that Risa that was uh, appointed and the, the Board of Commissioners for the Town of Hadley were not invited to participate in that appointment. And they should have been. The Board of Commissioners for the for the Housing Authority. Okay, sorry. Which, uh, yeah. No, that's yeah, what we okay. <laughs> So many boards. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. What email? What there's question. lots of emails. Oh, there's lots of emails. There's lots of emails. Yeah. I didn't so, get no? any. No, they're they're not coming through all of the selected. Oh. I was like, did I do something wrong? No, just so. going to the town of Houston or am I being cc no, they they've come to you. They've come through. Um, have I responded on behalf of the? I haven't gotten all of them. I, we are preparing a um, freedom of information request for the town emails, um, and for some people's personal emails, they're coming through personal emails as well. That's probably very inappropriate. I I mean I'm new to the board of commissioners. I've taken the open meeting law training. I've read the board of commissioner manual. And yet we have one board of commissioner member who is violating the open meeting law by having contact for uh, what's it called deliberative decision making. Mm -hmm. um, and then Ms. Nevinsmith is getting CC'd as well on town and personal email. And I'm very uncomfortable with it. So as, as a point of order, this was this part of the topic was not on the right. agenda. I, okay. would sit, I would so ask that you would have the joint meeting on let's an agenda. Let's have a joint meeting. Okay. We will work and set up a date. If I can add to, I do believe too, if these type of topics are going to come up, that it should be um, a special, um, an executive session meeting because they it, do. It does not fit the criteria. So if they do have, they are special municipal employees and they have rights. Um, it does. I, what you're discussing right now does not fit the okay. criteria for executive session. Okay. Right. It would have to be an open session. Thank you for being okay. here. Okay. Thank you. Right. I don't know. An administrator report. Is there anything we need to know that's critical? Um, just real quick the trade show for MMA, the annual meeting and conference, is on June 20th and 21st. The town does cover. Those expense some of those expenses. So okay. if you want to go, just twenty probably let Jennifer know. January mm -hmm. know. in person. Where um, is it? Yeah, Heinz Convention oh, Center yeah. in Boston. And I will. I will look at my schedule. No. There is a soft opening for Hadley on um, ten twenty two. Free samples. For, what is it? That wasn't in the announcement. Hadley's open soft opening. Hadley. Hadley, oh, Hadley. The marijuana dispensary. Oh, there's Jesus. soft opening. God, I, say, I wouldn't be in a mile of it. Unfortunately, I'm down. Um, <laughs> the, the only other thing that I wanted to share, because I, I knew it was going to be a long meeting, but uh, uh, Brandy Phil contacted um, us to let, let you know that the Shade Tree Committee would like to hold a tree dedication planting event to replace four trees on the common on Sunday, November 6th at 1 p.m. Uh, they have four trees being donated, and they were, would like to dedicate a tree to Jean and George Dragon Baxter, John Kiris, Claire Yazerski, as well as another tree for all of the town employees. So they wanted to make sure that that was announced. And they're replacing existing trees that have left us. Is that a question or are you telling that's me? What I, that's a okay. question, because that's what it sounded like you said. They're replacing four trees. It says replace four trees, so. Okay. I am not here on the 6th of November. I hope someone could use select board can attend. It's a, it's a weekend, right? Yes, yeah, Sunday. Probably. I went last year. Okay. A little chilly, but I went. I'll do my best. That's true. I was just going, I remember that one. Between work. All right. We still have an executive session. We have more announcements. Oh, more announcements. Announcements. Okay. So, trunk or treat which is next weekend at the uh, Safety Publix, uh, 5.30 to 7. 
And then there's also the Rag Shag Parade next week. Um, Park and Rec from the Legion to the school to the Legion. Um, Grain, he'll just be at the Legion. And let's see. Oh, I have um, some passings. So I'm going a little bit out of context because I have some that are not uh, Hadley residents, but they have been known to Hadley residents. So uh, we had the passing of Janet Slovatka. She was a principal at Hopkins Academy for many years, and I know that she probably has still some ties um, to Hadley. So our condolences to uh, her husband and family. Uh, the passing of Richard Sullivan, who was actually one of our superintendents uh, for a number of years. He came in for DM and ended up staying quite a while. And uh, the fellow was quite a penny pincher. You would like him. Uh, so <laughs> condolences to his family. Also, he's part of the Sullivan D.A. Sullivan from Northampton. Uh, we had the passing of Mary Murphy, who is uh, Peg Jekinowski's uh, mom. So condolences to Peg and um, her family also. We had the passing of Nancy Russell. Um, she's a town resident. Um, and so I, we send our condolences to her sons, uh, Todd and David and daughter, Julia. And then we had Claire Uzerski, who was a long time member of Hadley. And she was also um, a big leader of our Hadley Mothers Club for a number of years before um, stepping down and whatever. I was I actually was in Mothers Club at that point. So that's how long ago I'm old. Um, so condolences to her son, Jerome, and his family and daughter, Maureen, and Waskevich and her family. So quite a list this week, but our, we do share in their um, sorrows for this week. I have two um, fundraising announcements. One from the Friends of the Lake Warner. They're having a concert on Sunday, November 6th from 4 to 5.30 at the North, uh, North Hadley Congregational Church. And the Friends of the Hadley Council on Aging are having a wine tasting on Friday, October 28th at the Senior Center from 6 to 8. Trick or treat. After you treat, you can come and have a <laughs> glass of wine. wine. <laughs> Eat it by then. Okay. I'll make a motion to go into executive session, not to reconvene an open session. Second. May I have a vote? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. As chairman of